Good morning. It is currently 9 a.m. at the moment, so we're out bright and early. Basically today, I'm going to be talking about relationships, specifically my worst relationship mistakes in the past decade or so of dating and relationships. Today is going to be one of those vloggy type videos again where I take you guys on my solo date in town. I am walking to breakfast to go get some pastries and coffee. The walk to this cafe that I'm going to for breakfast is really, really nice because I have to go through this park. I don't know what the name of it is, but yeah, it's just a really nice nature-y walk. So I'm currently in a cafe right now that my sister recommended to me and I just got some breakfast. I got their famous cannabule, I think that's how you say it, and an oat milk latte. Now that I've got some food and coffee in me, it's giving me some courage to vlog outside. So let's do this. Just to give a quick background, in 10 years, I've had four official relationships and I've also kind of casually dated in between, done the whole LDR thing and also close distance relationships. And after many, many years of reflection and heartbreak and frustration, these are all the things that I would basically tell my past self uh, if I could go back in time. So mistake number one, I would say, is being scared to have the hard conversations. I had one partner in the past who I was always really scared to have difficult conversations with. Our level of emotional closeness wasn't really there and so I would avoid bringing things up. But I learned the hard way that brushing things aside doesn't magically make them go away. In fact, they just sort of like fester in you over time and it just gets worse and worse the longer you delay bringing it up, especially the big important things. And so all it really did was just prolong my misery. So just to kind of illustrate an example in that relationship, I realized that our emotional closeness was just not there. And I just had this kind of nagging suspicion in the back of my mind that he might still have feelings for his ex-partner and I sort of just like ignored that gut feeling for ages. I just told myself like, ah, oh, stop being ridiculous, you know, you're probably just overthinking it or whatever. And basically after months and months of just being anxious and having this concern in the back of my mind, we finally had that conversation and turns out that my suspicions were true. Long story short, after we had that conversation and after, you know, a whole bunch of other things happened and stuff, uh, the relationship ended not too long after. But yeah, basically, like, what I learned from that experience was that I could have saved myself months and months of anxiety and confusion and frustration if I had just brought the issue up from the beginning. And trust me, sometimes when you have these hard conversations, you are going to hear things that you really, really, really do not want to hear but need to hear and what's helped me a lot with feeling anxious about bringing up these hard conversations is realizing that there is no bad outcome from having the hard conversation so for example you know once you have that conversation there are only really two outcomes here so the first outcome is that you just resolve the issue you talk it through and everything's fine and dandy afterwards and you can move on with your lives or scenario number two you realize that maybe there is some really big incompatibility here or major issue that you can't resolve and and maybe it's best to just go your separate ways. And although that can feel really awful, obviously, at the end of the day, it just means that you didn't prolong something that wasn't meant for you in the first place. And you can both find someone else who can give you the relationship that you deserve and where, you know, there aren't these major incompatibilities. And also another thing is that if you feel like you can't have these difficult conversations with your partner or you have some fear with voicing out your opinions with them, then that in and of itself really shows that there is something wrong with the relationship. You should always be able to freely, you know, express your emotions and your opinions with them without having this constant fear of judgment. And if you don't have that, it really is just going to suffocate you after a while. Mistake number two that I would say is comparing my relationship to other people's. This is the worst mistake ever because you really never know what people are going through behind closed doors. And also at the same time, it makes you question the quality of your own relationship. So I have a friend 
and she is in a long-term relationship and whenever I see her post things on Instagram you know it's always really positive things about her relationship and her partner and truly like everything seems so fine and dandy and wonderful and I'm so happy for her and it seems like things are going really really well and it wasn't until the other day when I hung out with her one-on-one -on -one and she decided to open up to me about things and it turns out that things had been pretty rough with them for the past year which I was honestly really surprised by and you know it made me kind of sad to hear that obviously and that's just one example you know every single couple has their own shit that they're going through and they're not necessarily going to tell the whole world about it so it's kind of dangerous to kind of assume that another person's relationship is a certain way just because you know that's what you happen to see on their feed and if you really think about it every single individual is unique in their own way so when you bring two unique individuals together in a relationship you create this new organism that's like a one-of-a-kind thing it's a unique blend of the two of you and so that means what works for one couple may be completely disastrous and just nonsensical for another couple. There is no one correct single template to follow to have a successful relationship. That's gonna look so different for everybody. There's no gold standard that you have to follow. If the two of you are genuinely happy with how things are between the two of you, then you know it doesn't matter what other people are doing and what other people are saying. Let's say for example you meet up with your partner like twice a week. You know some people might be like oh my god God, twice a week like that's so much like how do you not get sick of each other and other people might be like oh twice a week that's so little like I see my partner every single day and who's to say that that's right or wrong it just happens to be what works for the both of you and I just wanted to round off this point by sharing a quote that I really really love from Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy but the quote is there are as many kinds of love as there are hearts okay so I just completely devoured my cinnamon bun so I I think I need to walk it off. The next location is gonna be this church that's quite high up and uh, basically it's like a famous lookout point to see the whole city. So yeah, let's go. So I reached the lookout point by the church and it is really, really nice. I don't think the footage really does it justice, but it's nice how you can see like the water surrounding the city and all the buildings. And you basically have like this 360 view of the town, which is really nice. So this is a little bit of a side note, but on the topic of relationships in Sweden, I was talking to my sister the other day about this and she was telling me how all of her girlfriends complained to her all the time about how it's so difficult to find a partner in Sweden. And I asked her why. And one of the main reasons is that that to begin with, there isn't that many people in Sweden. Like whenever I walk around town, even if it's like a supposedly a busy day, like the weekend, it's still really, really empty. Like I wouldn't say it's like a ghost town, but in comparison to Malaysia and KL where I lived previously, it really does feel like a ghost town. And I guess that makes sense to me. Another really interesting thing that I learned about Sweden is that apparently you guys have this culture where it's not the guys that will approach the girls, it's usually the other way around. So the girls would approach the guys, which I find really interesting and very unique. I'm really curious. So if you guys are from Sweden and you're watching this video, comment below what you guys think about this culture that you guys have. So mistake number three, I would say is being upset over little things that really don't matter. Imagine if every single time your friend did something little that bugged you and then you had to talk through it and process it. For some reason, we don't really do that when it comes to our friends, but it's so normal for us to do that with our partners. And when I realized this, it really changed my perspective a lot. Okay, so I had to change locations because there was a lot of people walking by. But what I was saying earlier was that in past relationships, I noticed that I would place more weight on my partner's actions and behaviors versus my friends. Like in the past, I had many moments where, you know, if my partner said or did something that I felt was a little bit off then it would turn into a thing like it's something that I would bring up to them whereas I realized that you know if the same thing happened with a friend then I would just kind of brush it off like oh okay whatever maybe they were just having an off day or you know I just came at the wrong time or whatever and I wouldn't assign so much meaning to it I've 
learned that the best thing sometimes is just to let shit go. Not everything has to turn into a thing and not everything has to be talked through. And yeah, just have conversations about the things that matter. One of my friends gave me this piece of advice once and I think it's a pretty great rule of thumb. And what she said was, you know, if there's something that your partner said or did that upset you, then just give it 24 hours. Give yourself that time, that pause to sort of like think it through and you know process it internally. And if after 24 hours it really, really bugs you still, then maybe it's something that you might have to talk through with them. Another thing which has really helped me to refrain from this and refrain from other negative relationship behaviors is just to sort of like put myself in my partner's shoes. Like I know it sounds pretty obvious, but it's kind of like, okay, well, if I did this thing to my partner, then you know how would that make them feel so for example if like every little thing that i said or did like ticked them off then you know i would find that kind of suffocating and annoying and so it's like why would i do that to them relationship mistake number four would be not being 100 percent myself from the get-go when you first meet someone it's normal to want to put your best foot forward and to present yourself as the best version of you because obviously like you want to impress them you really like them or whatever and so because of that i think you know it can be really tempting to sort of like hide certain aspects of yourself that you think aren't as desirable or it could cause you to kind of act in a certain way that you think that they would like. I've definitely been guilty of this in the past and it's the completely wrong way to go about dating for many reasons. At the end of the day, you really want to be your authentic self as much as possible around them, especially in the early stages of dating. Otherwise, you're just going to attract the wrong person for you. And to be honest, why would you want to be in a relationship where you can't 100% be your genuine authentic self with that other person? On the flip side though, it is challenging to be your genuine self from the get-go. And the reason is because, you know, you're going to end up having loads of first dates where you just completely will not vibe with the other person and there is going to be a lot of initial discomfort but i frame that as like a positive thing in my mind because it just means that you're going to be sifting through all the unsuitable matches quite quickly from the beginning which in turn means that you are going to find the right match a lot faster okay so before i move on to my final point i'm gonna switch locations partially because i need to find a bathroom as well so let's go On to the final relationship mistake, and that is not finding someone who matched my energy. And this is all about finding someone who is willing to put as much effort into the relationship as you are. A relationship only really works if both people are still willing to work at it. Of course, it's not realistic to expect like a 50-50 split all the time, but the effort that both people put in should more or less be comparable. I was in a relationship with someone before who was emotionally unavailable, and that meant that I was continually putting a lot more effort into the relationship than they were. In wanting to talk about and resolve issues, or even down to simple things like you know deciding what to do together over the weekend there was a very large discrepancy between you know how much effort each person was putting in and that sort of experience really chips away at you over time and it is a recipe for resentment to grow and it's not something that you want to keep asking for from the other person ideally the other person should want to put in the effort on their own without you sort of having to remind them or tell them because otherwise you know you start turning into this naggy person in their eyes and then over time you just grow resentment towards each other you know in case any of you guys need this reminder you deserve someone who pours in as much love and effort into you as you do into them and now when i think about future relationships i make sure that this is something that i keep in mind that you know both of us are very much aligned in how much effort we want to be pouring into this relationship. You know, sometimes people want something that's a bit lighter or low effort, let's say, or low maintenance. And that's perfectly fine. Everyone has their own set of preferences when it comes to relationships. But if that's not something that you want, then don't kid yourself over it. Just find someone who is a bit more aligned with you in that aspect. Okay guys, so we've made it to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now that I've shared all of my past relationship mistakes, I'd be really curious to know what are some of the biggest lessons that you guys learned from your experience of dating and relationships. As always, take care and see you in the next video.